a high drops that we probably do want to draw. In sealed, I'm usually pretty low. Ooh, that is rough. It's not a keep. Oh, man. Wow. Do we want to mulligan that? Nope. We're, we're, keeping, we're keeping lands. We're on wow, the draw. That's really terrible. It is really terrible. We could easily lose here. Um, our opponent did mulligan to... We're going to put that on top. Did mulligan to Oblivion, however. So they're on four cards. Oh, wow. Uh, sealed is slower. So the likelihood that we are punished... It's hard by not being able to get cards out is lower, but mulliganing down further means yeah, it that... it didn't seem like a good idea. Well, it means even if we had a good hand, like, we're not going to have a fast hand to win. Yeah. All right. Six. Now, we could theoretically drop that Cultivator drone, then drop the Aberration, and then just go for as long as we can with the ab Aberration. Well, it's it, to draw it, cards. it dies to Netcaster Spider. Oh, because it gets bigger when it blocks. Yeah. So I'll oh, we could we could kill it with Oblivion Strike, and then play the Abomination. Or we could play the Aberration, sack the Cultivator Drone, kill the, and then then we'd have to sack it. So it's probably not worth it. Why don't we just rip their hand apart? Yeah. We just uh, totally stop them from ever winning the game. Wow, they only had two cards in their hand too. They mulligan down to four. Um. Oh! Well, nice. maybe they were good cards, and they didn't want us to have sideboard options against them, and they knew that the likelihood of them winning was very, very close. I mean, we drew well. We drew a bunch of creatures, but imagine if you know we drew some lands, it would be bad. But you don't usually assume your opponent's six-card hand is just a bunch of lands. That's a good point. Um, I'm more willing to keep a bunch of lands with how our deck works out and sealed being slower. Uh, Let's postpone post that. Uh, so great. this looks like a pretty darn good hand. You it's even tell. got a waste in it. You can always tell a good hand because it has a good mix of spells and not spells. Well, and we've got a waste, which means we can use the Blinding Drone, which is pretty impressive. I personally am excited about this Witness in into Ruin Processor to gain us five life in the future. Yes. I okay. Mean, we so should definitely do that. We're too. playing against White Black, and it might be a good version of White Black. All right, so we definitely want to play that Blinding Drone. And we're holding the waste here... Because we don't want our opponent to know that we can activate it until we want to activate it. And that could be as soon as next turn. We don't really have anything to do next turn. Um, I don't think I would trust them not to have a trick. I'm fine trading my card for a trick. Uh, I think our blinding drone is way better that we've got the waste in the hand. And if they're faking it, they're faking it. Yeah, and the one thing I do like about this is that... Um, Wait, play the... Play the no, I want them to attack enemy so I can sweep away their creature if they play combat tricks. Ah. Got that next level thinking. Alright. So this, this is trying to get a card out. That'll get me a two for one in a position I normally couldn't get one in. And they expect us not to block because we didn't last turn. Right. But we're going to this time. So this time we're calling their bluff. So you're... I just I just want them to skip a draw step. Okay, you should... I did it after combat. You should do it during their instant, right? It says uh, attacking creature. Oh, okay, library. Yeah, so library. Uh, and, and I did it after damage because it gave them a chance to play all the stuff. They decided not to. The damage is unlikely to matter. Sifter of Skulls, that's a good card. Whenever another non-token creature dies, they get a Scion. Nice. Alright, so do we want to commit to tapping that down? Yeah. And just play the Cultivator Drone? Okay. Yeah. And then, next turn we would probably want to try to witness the end on them, right? Or probably. Or turn after that, maybe. Depending on if we get a land untapped. Because we want to keep that tapped down, right? Yeah. We'd like to buy more time. Our opponent does have a lot of cards in hand, so I'm not... Rushing the witness, I could very easily play the Pathfinder before the witness, just because you know. Okay, well now I really want to get some kind of removal. That's a problem card. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Fortunately, they only refer to me as Lucky Dan. No one actually calls him that. Lucky Dan. Now we can keep both those creatures up and just block. If you want. Mm. Or we could hit them. 
I mean, we could have hit them for three, and then they hit us back for four. That'd have been fine. We're incentivized to wait, though. We have a six and seven drop in hand. That's a good point. Oh, I forgot you could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't <laughs> want to play the combat tree. Our creatures are much more valuable. Well, we know when they drew that. Uh, so we're just going to drop the six. six drop on mm -hmm. our turn? Yes, because next turn they should go to two cards. And then we'll be able to just take them both. Well, that worked out really well, because now we can tap a creature and have a, a six drop. I was thinking if I want to tap the drone or not, but I don't. Well, you could <coughs> actually tap with the drone, probably. I'm going to tap their creature again. So they can't block with it. Man, it feels good to be Eldrazi's. It, it is unfortunate that our opponent get to play the first game. It's unfortunate it's, for them, yes. Well, it's unfortunate for playing Magic, you know. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm. Alright, so now we tear their hand apart. Or we drop a 7-8. And okay. gain 5 life. I like tearing their hand apart. I do too. So they had a trick that would have blown us out. Two tricks that would have blown us out. So the last card in their hand is awesome. I don't know what it is, but let's see. Uh, that's two, three, four, five. They could have killed the Pathfinder. Um, and we would have traded two for one, which isn't terrible, but it's not as nice when it's a Pathfinder. And then a Unnatural Endurance, which also would have done good work for them. So whatever they have in hand is pretty good. All right, why don't you make the 2-2 two -two not be able to block by tapping the Wastes? No. I don't want the 1-4 to block. The 2-2 two -two is more valuable, in oh. my opinion. Okay, that's fine. Because the 2-2 two -two is going to enable his, his combo. It's going to let him gain life, which makes his other creatures better. Yeah, and he didn't block. I would probably block with the Aft Protector. I would probably not block with the Omni War Cleric. And so on their turn, before they go to combat, we're going to tap down the creature again, I guess. Yeah. So now we're in an interesting spot of, do we play the 7-8? Or do we play around Wrath stuff? I think we just play the 7-8. Um, and then we can actually hold back the Pathfinder if we want. Yeah, we should hold back the Pathfinder. Getting in there for one. Alright, so our opponent has to have something they can play. Mm. Sheer drop, that's not nearly good enough, though. They did awaken a land. One, two, three, four. No, they did. Yeah, they did. One, two, three, four. We have five, exactly six, seven. Um, I'll just wait. I'm going to play my five, five. I'd like to have access to tap down their stuff. Well, actually, I do right. not want to get discarded for two. And they can't really swing through a seven, eight. And we gained five life, so there's not really any ability. There's not any really way that they can get too far ahead. Uh, put the creature? No, put the regenerate. Yeah, there you go. They probably can't get that back. No. And we have a 7-8, so there's not a lot of things that can swing through that. There's not a lot of combat tricks that put you far enough ahead for that. Yeah, they won't, they won't attack us because we'll just block and destroy it. Right. And then on our turn, we can actually tap down one of their creatures... An attack. Three. Now let's try a bunch of my creatures for a bunch of theirs and then play a Pathfinder. Okay. Hmm, so I would gain block expecting you didn't have another one. Oh, or just not block. I don't know what they have in hand. Uh, it's probably not much. <sighs> So you're going to tap down one of the creatures? Yeah. Mm. 
I don't tap want... down their 2-2. Two -two. They're not going to attack with that. I think I want to tap down their... If you tap down their 2-2, two -two, it taps down two of their creatures. Oh, great point. Or, or they don't gain the two life. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's, especially since we've gone to the aggressive position. And then you have two color sources, so you can make two creatures not be able to block the Pathfinder, which means it'll probably get through. Well, I think I might just use one source for the Pathfinder and keep up tapping. We can tap down one of the other cards if we want to take the, the crack back, which we can probably afford to do at this point. Uh, we can always play the Warden as well. So let's go ahead and tap one of their creatures. Uh, gonna tap the biggest one? Or we'll you tap the 3-3 three, three so they can't use it for mana. Okay, so I would respond by... Oh, he doesn't have enough mana to sack the thing to get a bunch of life. Okay, and your failed dark cub can't block it. Alright, so we're going to take the crack back and just attack both. Alright. I mean... That seems like the best plan. We are playing a 2-3. There's a good chance they're just going to jump block. Yeah. I mean, they're not in a position to do otherwise. And then it, they get two one ones, Which does help for the jump blocking. Oh, yeah. They'll keep them alive for a long time. Go ahead and throw the warden down, I guess. Yeah. But in so the warden... So we played all but one of our big creatures, right? That is correct, um, and the last one will let us just drain them to death. Uh, I would actually prefer not to draw it for a while. <coughs> so, you can, so you can play it and use it. Yeah, and, and so I can have bigger creatures in the graveyard if it comes to that. Yeah, you only have the one big one. That's such a weird attack. Uh, I think it's the only time they're going to have to attack and they know it. They are getting a lot of life. They're gaining, what, one, two, three, four, five, ten life. So they'll be at 22. Which seems like it's like really great, but we're doing chunks of 12. Well, they've got a few more chunk blocks that, that when we attack, they get to attack, so... Yeah, we're going to start tapping down their stuff now and, and playing slightly more conservatively, but I'm going to attack for 12 every turn. That's true. And I, at this point, I'm Well, so this time you're only going to attack with a 7 and the, and the 5 and not tap anything, right? Just let them chunk block? That's right, and then I'm going to actually uh, tap down their swamp next turn and I'll double block. I'll trade Cultivator Drone or Warden for that 4-3. It's a good plan. I don't particularly need another and, color And we source. could draw something that is actually a decent blocker. Oh, our opponent's playing something. I would try Defiler of their own. That's relevant. Very relevant. Now, what all do they have in their graveyard? 2-3 damage? The graveyard because it does it does power right yeah power one two three okay so then we can make this not be able to block an attack with our five five keep our creature back and then starting next turn just tap their dread to file their different from attacking I think that's the best plan yeah now you can actually make them both not block if you want no I need to save well well it's because you have a I'm actually pretty happy with him blocking with that creature. I think that it's actually correct not to block with that creature. Oh, Vigilance should have attacked with it. <laughs> oh no, it can block. Yeah. It's not cannot block. It's cannot block this dude. Yeah. Well, so they know they can gain a lot of life, so. We could have tapped that down and swung with everybody, but the crackback's too much. Yeah, see? Right here, now he can start using his ally ability. Mmm. All right, so now if we tap another creature, we can't actually tap its presence anything, right? Right. Um, we can just use this ability twice <coughs> to stop him from blocking with his 4-5. So, so he's tapped out, so if we can kill him in this swing, he just dies. We can only tap down one creature. He has three blockers. We can prevent him from blocking this. He blocks the next three biggest creatures. No, we can only do six. Okay. Right. So, I think we should probably make... The 4-5 not be able to attack or block. Right? Oh, don't we want that one? Isn't he an ally? Don't we want that one to block? It's pretty beefy, though. Um, it, it, we can just make his land 
and his ally not able to block. And he can double block and trade both of these creatures, or he can trade nothing and just take or and jump block. So that's where I want to be at. Okay. So he can either chump or trade two for one. I guess we can attack with the seven, eight. And the crackback's gonna suck. Well, we'll have that one tap down, so he'll be able to hit us four. Well, so if you seven. attack with if you attack with both, he does have to block. He has it's to block. Seven. We'll see. That is eight power, and we only get to kill one. So actually, I don't like attack that attack. Plus, if we draw any colorless spells, Titan's Presence can uh, really skew combat in our favor. Well, so, if I were him, I wouldn't block right now. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Something gains flying. Yep. So, he only got one creature? It's whenever another creature. Sifter of Souls doesn't make it itself. Skulls, sorry. Oh. But didn't one of our creatures die? Does it only count his creatures? It's only his creatures. Oh, it's only his creatures. I thought that was way better. No, it's a solid card, but I wouldn't, you know. If, we didn't lose to If it. I could choose to have a Sifter of Skulls or a Blinding Throne in our deck, I would always choose the first Blinding Throne. Oh, yeah. I'm not understanding why he's playing creatures instead of gaining life. Right, you gotta wait till it goes to combat. Yeah. Alright, so they, they can attack, but it's not a good attack. No, especially with one mana. There's no one mana spell that makes that a good attack. Uh, I guess we play that land. No, nah, I'll hold you back for his discard spells. Oh, it's a good play. Um, do we tap down one of his creatures? Uh... Do we just attack with the 7-8? I think we attack with the 7-8. And let him trade? Now, now, if we attack with 7-8, we're not blocking all that. So maybe it's not a good idea to not... Maybe it's a good idea to not attack. Because the crackback is going to hurt. Now next turn, he'll be able to tap down our stuff. Uh, oh, tap. He yeah. has to tap his 4-5 and that thing? Yeah. To tap our big dude? Yes. Um... But we can respond by tapping down his big dude. Yeah, so... Okay, I want to wait just because Titan's Presence is so good. And I still don't feel like we have great attacks. Now, if I was him, I'd probably just sacrifice the Blighted Step. The, the downside is, sacrificing the Blighted Step takes off the option for Defiler, which is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we've got a problem. Ooh, that's rough. Land. Tap the land. Why didn't you tap a land? Yeah, I was thinking about it. Oh, you're lucky, because he should have attacked there, in my opinion. Why? Tap two creatures, you have a two, three. Oh, never mind. He doesn't have a good attack. Well, he could attack with a three, three. All right. So three. We can get rid of something with power toughness. Like, we get rid of the spawn binder, right? Wait, you can is it an exile creature? Yeah. Okay, power is less than. So yeah. Yeah, play the, play the land too, I suppose. So you should tap down the rune processor. Yeah. Um, oh, uh... Yeah. We'll go ahead and play a land. Because then I'll be able to keep colorless up. Well, and... You can activate that ability at the end of turn. Yep. And you should. Yeah, we're going to start sifting for the stuff to end this game. And he is going to try to drain us for two every turn until we die from it. And he very easily can. We do need more removal. Alright, so... During combat, you should... Let him go to attacks? And then tap his guy that loses two life, right? So he'll attack us with a 6-8? Yeah. 
and we'll chop block it, right? With? Uh, it doesn't matter what we chop block it with. Either the, the drone or the geometries. And then he'll probably tap two of his creatures to drain us, so he'll be down to just three blockers. Right, but he'll attack with a 4-5 and a 6-8. No, he has... Oh, he did play another ally. Never mind, that changes everything. Just tap the normal creature. Seriously, use the land to tap. Oh, right. Golly. There we go. Alright. Um... He's almost being able to attack. Alright, so be sure you... Yeah. Uh, you don't want to put the land in his... Or the creature in his thing. Yeah. Alright, so... That's a good card. That's uh, a much better card. Play them both. In the correct order. What's well, either order. We have a ton of lands. Yes, but the correct order is that. Cast with Surge. Alright, that flyer should lock up the game for us. Uh... Do we need to attack? I don't see why you wouldn't attack at this point. That Their 6-8 can't do anything. And they'll trade several creatures for one. Yeah. And our 3-5 can block their 4-5. And we've got two 3-5s to double block kill it. Yeah. If I was them, I would actually probably just block with the Scion. Yeah, that's what they should do. Or they should take it and immediately sack and gain uh, two fours, uh, 12 life. Because they might be able to race at that point by gaining 12 life. I would probably just block the Scion, sack it, and use Blighted Step. Mm. Hey guys, I like what's going on here. Alright, so you definitely want to kill the 4 or 5 first. So I'd put that first. Uh, and then put the out the second ally next. Not that it matters. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're gonna tap down there. Six eight. Yep. They're trying to sacrifice this step. Oh, sorry, they're using that ability. Oh, man. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They have enough. They just need enough turns. So we really need a way to answer that Dread Defiler. Uh, there's no way in our deck, right? Mm. The only way we could, we could win now is for them to tap low enough and we Dread Defiler them. It's true, too. We probably need to play a little faster, too, because we're at 11 minutes. And we've got, a, we've got another round. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We have enough mana. That, that we could... Play and activate Dread Defiler and do it for 7. Okay. All right, so they've got, what, two more turns, three more turns before they kill us? Yep, but it's less than that because they're, they're Zulu porting us. Okay, so it's two more turns. Yep. And that's counting this one. Yeah. All right, so what about we, instead of tapping their Dread Defiler, we can jump block it or triple block it or something. We tap down their Cutthroat. It's true, we can't just let them attack the Dread Defiler, because at this point it's more important for it not to attack than it is to attack. Yeah, yeah, so so tap down their Cutthroat, hope they tap the two allies. That might let us just swing for enough damage to kill them. Yeah. If they do it wrong. Because keep in mind, we get to untap and tap another creature. So. And if they tap too low to activate the step, which is what they seem to be doing right now... Well, there's a raptor. That doesn't help them. It gets them, uh... Oh, that's an interesting one. Alright, so now tap their cutthroat. 
It means that our flyer doesn't just get through. It still gets through, right? They can trade two for three. They have two things for flying? They can trade two damage for three damage and win the race. Oh. Not if we kill them right now. If right. they make a mistake right now and tap down too many creatures, we just swing through and kill them. Yeah. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Not if they're smart. Because um, they're just thinking if they should drain or not. Probably they should drain. Probably we don't have enough. Another creature down. We have one, two. So they'll have a four, four. No, they'll have a. They'll have a. They'll have three blockers. They'll have three blockers. Yeah. So. And we'll have five attackers. So two will get through. But that's we'll, not enough. We'll hit them for four. Um. We don't have any other instant speed removal or anything, do we? We've got, I think, bounce spells. No, we already used it. No, we used it. No, we used Sweep Away already. Okay, so... Wait. Hold on. Hold on. If we attack first, and then do this... We lose two mana. Let's count our mana. One, two, three, four... Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Okay. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Alright. So... Okay, we need don't, don't count any of the creatures. Just count the lands. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need one more. We need ten, right? No, we need eleven. Oh, we need eleven? Six, seven. Oh, okay. So we need to hold two creatures back. This one makes mana regardless. But they can just block it. And kill it. Yeah, so we need to hold two of the creatures back. Now we could just tap their flyer and hit them for three and kill them. So that's actually what I'm going to do. Oh, oh, well, that was way easier math. Is that Xaxes? No, it's one over. No, I mean the exact amount of mana we needed. Yeah. Pretty lucky. Mm, yeah, because I think we only have one turn left in us. Yeah, I think I think we died on their next turn. We might have gotten another turn. Oh my gosh. I forgot about this abomination. There we go. Oh, yes. That one you have to activate first. Don't click wrong. Yay! Getting lucky! Lucky people! <laughs> lucky people! That was I mean, amazing. We, we, was we, game we three. were playing to that out. So, G game three would have been okay, but yeah, I do think that they were in a good position because their deck was quite powerful going along. Hi guys. Um, ah, let's see if this works. There we go. All right, guys. We will be back in just one minute. Um, we'll let Brad take this call real quick, and we'll decide if we're going to play another match or if we're just going to talk a little bit more about some of the more spoilers. Around. So just give us one minute, and we'll be right back.